So, what happens if the vector doesn't fall nicely on a grid, or if we don't have a grid at all? Then we have to fall back on right triangle trigonometry. So I'm going to remind you about that in this video. Consider two triangles, an orange triangle, and sort of lying under it, a uh, black triangle. Uh, they're both right, ang right triangles, and they share this angle, which I'm calling theta. I haven't told you the angle, but they have, they have the same angle. And we know that we can find the unknown side of the black triangle because the orange and black triangles are similar via angle side angle. Angle side angle to, oops, oh, sorry, actually angle angle angle. So let's fix that now. Even, even easier that if I have this angle and this angle in common, then these two angles have to be equal. So the triangles are similar because they have the same shape, which is what similar means. And therefore we know that the sides are in the same ratio, that the vertical side is the horizontal side in one triangle as it is the other. And so we say the unknown side would be 1.5, right? just by arguing by similar triangle stuff. In other words, the ratio of the sides would be the same as long as the angle is the same. It doesn't really matter. If I had gone out, instead of 6, I had gone out 16, then I would get a triangle that was 4 times as large, and so the side would be 4 times as large. Now, if we change the angle and create new to create some new triangles, the sides would again have the same ratio to each other, but the value of the ratio would be different for the different angles. So you have to be careful what same mean. Here I don't mean the same as this ratio, but that, again, the sides of the similar, similar triangles would be in the same ratio, because that's what similar triangles do. That is to say, the ratio of the sides is a function of the angle. For historical reasons, we call that function the tangent function, and we abbreviate it as tan of theta. For other historical reasons, we often don't write the parentheses, so we also can write tan theta, no parentheses. I would recommend writing the parentheses, but I say that knowing that I don't always write the parentheses. Um, tangent theta without the parentheses, the sort of naked function call, predates our concept of functions, <coughs> and so the notation hadn't standardized yet. Likewise, that's why it's the tan and not like an f or something. In a similar manner, we could find other ratios in the right triangles that we'd had. Two of particular importance are the sine function sine <coughs> and the cosine function cos. Given a right triangle and an angle theta in that triangle, we define the following names for the sides. We say that the hypotenuse is always the longest side in the triangle. The adjacent is then the other side that makes up the given angle. So theta is composed of the hypotenuse and the adjacent side. And then the opposite side is the one that's left, since the triangle has three sides. You can think of the opposite as that if you stand at the vertex and look, it's the one that's opposing you. Right? It's the outfield uh, fence in a baseball diamond. Notice this depends on which angle we pick, and if we were to pick this angle, then we'd have swapped. Um, this would become the opposite, and this would become the adjacent. So it's very dependent on what angle we're talking about. But once we've defined the angle, we have defined the sides, and then the trig functions turn out to be, historically, that the opposite divided by the hypotenuse is the sine of the angle, the adjacent divided by the hypotenuse is the cosine, and the opposite divided by the adjacent turns out to be um, the tangent. So notice the tangent is actually just sine over cosine, because the hypotenuse would cancel out there. There's not much more to say than these are the historical names, and you sort of need to know them. They're universally there. As a really quick aside, why is tangent used for the function that we call the tangent function? Well, the value of the tangent really is related to a tangent. If we draw an angle in a unit circle, right? so we take a, unit, a circle whose size is 1, we draw it. We draw an angle by taking two uh, radii, extending them outward. We pick one of those radii, take the tangent perpendicular to it. Right, the tangent at the other at the end of the radius, which will automatically be perpendicular, extend the other radius out until it intersects that line, and then this thing, the opposite side, turns out to be the value of tangent that we're talking about. And you can come up with uh, similar definitions of sines and cosines, although they're less obviously related to the geometry that we usually teach now. So, in essence, we're just going to use that for vectors, which basically act like sides of triangles. Um, so we're going to say if we have a triangle like a vector like this, we can say that a sub x is a cosine theta. So we just take the definition of cosine, right? Cosine is defined as 
the adjacent side over the hypotenuse. And then I just solve it algebraically and I get that. And likewise, I can get the definition of sine and I solve algebraically and get y. Or if I had uh, the two components, ax and ay, then I could use the Pythagorean theorem to get the far side, and I could use the definition of tangent to get the angle. So we just do trig back and forth as need be to convert back and forth between the components and the regular specified method. By the way, we should be careful here, though, because here I've drawn a triangle, and since I'm in the first quadrant, I'm okay. All the sides are positive. But you know that if we had a, a vector going this way, and we talked about its components, then AX, the component, would be negative. And so we need to be careful about that. We'll talk about that as this video goes on. All right. The important caveat, the trig really relates the magnitude of the components because we're using geometry, and geometry doesn't have negatives. So we have to be careful to assign the proper sign to the components. For instance, what are the X and Y components of this vector? And some will be easy, right? We can say that a y over a is the sine of the angle. So I get that a y is 11.7 meters times the sine of 12 degrees, which turns out to be 24.3 meters. And then if we just do a different color, that AX over A is the cosine of the angle. So we get AX is 11.7, whoops, sorry, this would be 2.43, because it's 11.7, I did as on my calculator as 117. 11.7 meters times the cosine of 12 degrees, which is, 11.4 meters, give or take. But we know there's a problem because we should have that AX is negative. So we'd have to just put that sign on. We'd say like, really? It's minus that. And this is a place where we do kind of kludge it up. There are some ways of having the math take care of it free automatically, but they involve other uh, costs that we'd have to pay. And I'm going to follow it this way, that you should just treat them as positives and then assign the negative sign. Or if you're doing things where you're going to use trig functions, you got to remember you're going to use the absolute values. And what I really should have said way back when is that the absolute value of AX over A is the cosine. Okay, here a little bit more legibly as we run through it, we get these values. All right, just some practice. What is the y component of the vector shown? So remember, that's going to be our side. I'm going to call that a y, and we'll call this a. I'm going to say that the a y over a is the same as the opposite of the hypotenuse. So this is the sine. So a y is a sine theta. So 6.4 sine 35 or 3.67, 3.7, I guess. All right, couple of things. We've been associating the y with the sine, and that will happen a lot, but it happens because our angle is being measured relative to the horizontal. If we had been measured relative to the vertical, we'd have ended up with the cosine associated with y. And you should always check that, even though almost always we'll measure angles from the horizontal. That won't always be the most convenient way to do it. It won't always be the way problems are set up. And you should make sure that you follow what's actually happening and not what you're used to happening.